What's bleeding? The seal. The seal's not getting attacked. It's all bleeding. The seal's killing something. He's got a big fish. The seal's eating a fish. He's having breakfast. Hey, look at him smashing it about. Hey, we've seen everything this morning. We've seen a shark cruising on the surface. We had baby dolphins swimming in the front of the boat. And we got old Sammy the seal just smashing a breakfast. Hey. Don't want to disturb you, mate. All right, bud. Oh, he's coming to say hello. hello. <laughs> What's he doing? Hey. He's just chilling. Dogs of the ocean. They are, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Slapping his breakfast about. Obviously, he's having trouble chewing it up. Whatever it is, must be a bit tough. Give me a bit of stingray. They love eating stingrays. All right, leave you to it, buddy. Enjoy your breakfast. Oh, what's he doing? He's coming over the boat. I oh, know he's just smashing his. What is it, squid? It could be a squid. I don't know. Whatever it is, he's smashing shit out of it, though. That's pretty cool. All right, good morning, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Redemption Tackle. Today we're out chasing gummy sharks. I'm running through all the rigs, tips, and tricks we use to be successful at catching them during the demersal ban. So we'll start off with the easy one, the rig. So all it is is two circle hooks, five O's, snelled on some 40 pound multi-strand wire, an Albright knot, and then a couple of meters of 40 pound wire, uh, 40 pound mono trace, and a very small running sinker. Baits we're using today, we've got a mixture, we've got scalies, blue mackerel, squid, which is a favorite of the gummy shark, a bit of octopus as well. We're gonna burly like crazy, hopefully get them up and around the area. And we'll fish a few different rigs and hopefully get a few gummy sharks. Now, there's a good chance there'll be quite a few other sharks around as well, little bronzy spinner sharks, hammerheads, etc. Which is why we fish this little bit of wire, just to stop them from biting through. And the reason I only fish a small amount of wire, because normally there's a few bigger sharks around too, and I don't really want to have to fight them if I don't have to. So hopefully they'll bite us off. Alright, so we've we'll got the first rig in the water. Drag set. Perfect. Easy. All right. Now the next one. <coughs> I fish two rigs like that, and then I fish one that just sits under the boat. It's just on a three-way swivel, like so. Same idea with the snell. Two five-o circles, some forty-pound multi-strand wire. Oh, a bit of wire on my finger, and then. That's all an all bright knot onto some mono trace. So we'll get a sinker. We might put a, uh, a squid head on this one. And we'll drop this one straight over the side and let it sit onto the boat. The other two will cast out the back of the boat to different angles, try and spread the baits, and I'll start burly and I'll show what we do there. Alright. Get a nice big squid head. What I'm gonna do actually is keep a couple of these candles. I'm going to type a small bait rig in a minute. There's plenty of whiting in the area, which is another gummy shark's favorite food. So we'll try and catch a few whiting for bait as well. So, rig this, your trailing hook or your bottom hook, just through a bunch of the tentacles. So, and then your top hook just pins in the head, and that just holds the bait. Like that. Little three ounce snapper or four ounce snapper sinker. I'm gonna go straight to the bottom. All right, guys, this is a little smorgasbord of baits. We've got some blue mackerel, fillets, just cutting them into little chunks and strips, squid heads, oki tentacles, which I'll skin. Some old muleys I'm going to put through the hand mincer and make some nice burly. Some fresher muleys. We've got some scalies in the bucket I haven't grabbed out yet. It's a good little mix of bait and have plenty of burly in the water. 
Nikki's currently fishing, catching some butterfish and hopefully some whiting. And fingers crossed we can get a couple of fresh whiting out there. And uh, we should be in for a good day. Plenty up early. The weather is absolutely glorious. Couldn't have asked for a better Sunday morning. Nikki's getting plenty of bites on the fresh squid tentacles. So we'll keep persisting and see how we go. That looks like a butterfish, I think, by the way it's fighting. Yeah. Oh, that's a, ah, it's a good whiting. Beautiful. Just what we wanted. Look at that. Gorgeous whiting. Good work. All right, we'll get him off and we'll get him on the hook. Oh. So that's a butterfish grabbing that bait. It's all going on. Hey, double header. Good whiting and a tangle. Two beautiful whiting. Look at that. That one's probably close to a couple of good fillets on the table. It's a beast. Proper sand whiting too. So was that one or silver school whiting? The other ones you caught were actually uh, what they call trumpeter whiting. Like little stripes, little stripes on them, yeah. So on the side of the boat I've got just a bag of blue mac frames and pieces. Give that a shake every now and again. Let it release all that goodness. And then coming out of the hand mincer is just this goop. It's delicious. Nothing but pure smell. And the best thing is, is it's too small things like the sharks to feed on but they'll smell that from miles away and come in see our baits snaffle them up and we're in this thing here is worth its weight in gold not swimming at you lost him you sure no he's there isn't he yeah he's just swimming at you have a bad habit of doing that. Still there? Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Alright. Oh, that one should be alright at the back there, hopefully. Alright. Drag's a bit loose. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Feeling a bit of line. That's it. Could be a nice gummy shark, I reckon, the way he's fighting. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, I can see him from the side of the boat. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Look at that for a gummy shark. Absolute gorgeous. All right, you want to step back a bit, please, babe? I'll go to the edge of the boat. Grab the trace line. This is when they go nuts. Alright, watch your feet, watch yourself. Watch out, those hooks, hooks. Leave your feet, leave your feet. Right. Watch out, you know, shit out of you. I'm more worried about those hooks. Alright. All right, as long as those hooks are in the carpet, I'm happy. You want to grab that second? Yes, sure. Crisis averted. All right, perfect little eating size gummy shark. So, first things first. Let's get it hooked out of its face. <clears throat> that was dangerous. In hindsight, next time I'll grab the net. <laughs> I just fell out. didn't expect him to come up that easy. Yeah, they don't fight overly hard. That's why I fish pretty light gear for them. Get that dangerous situation out of the way. Beautiful. Look at that. Your first gummy shark, eh? Very cool. Whoop. So obviously the reason they call these gummy sharks is these guys don't have any teeth. So you can quite safely put your finger in there. Ah, he's got me! Nah, just joking. <laughs> they got no teeth. 
Now the horrible part is putting him out of his misery. Oof. The safest and well, most humane way to do it, give him a good crack to the head with a uh, fish billy. Do you so we won't one? show you guys that, because it's not nice to watch, but it has to be done. Then you cut the tail off at the knuckle and let him bleed out. Get all the blood out of him as possible. After about 10 or so minutes, then you want to pull them up, cut all their fins off, start at the anal, work your way up and around the gills, snap the head forward, pull all the guts out and you trunk the shark. That's the best way to keep them for eating. So we're going to keep this little girl. Mm. That's going to be dinner when you want to let her go, because it's a girl. No. We can let her go if you want, I don't mind. You want to let her go? Mm. You do, don't no. you? <laughs> If you want to let it go, we can let it go. Be quick. No, it's okay. All right. Okay. All right, so that's the first bit of excitement for the day. As you can see, she's letting her blood out the tail end now. So I'll let that go for about 10 minutes or so. And then I'll trunk her, and I'll show you guys how to do that. It's pretty easy. And it's a good way to... Well, it's, a, it's the only way, really, to look after a shark. To make sure they're going to taste great. Right. and bleed for a while. Now it's time to trunk her. So I'll do it on the deck so it's a bit easier. But ideally, you want to hack all the fins off. I don't throw any of these over the side when I'm fishing. I've done it a few times, and as soon as I've done it, I haven't caught a shark afterwards. Bigger sharks will eat smaller sharks, but smaller sharks, when you dump the, front, the fins and the guts and that in the water, in my experience, I found it seems to put them off. So. Bigger sharks don't seem to care, they'll obviously eat a smaller shark. But the smaller ones, I don't know, it seems to spook them. So save them, get, you know, a couple of k's away from your spot. Then dump the, uh, the fins and the stomach contents in the head. So in order to do this now, you start here at the anal gland or anal hole, work your way up and around the gills, across the back of the head and back down. And you should be able to snap the head forward and pull all the stomach out in one shot. Let's see if we can do it. What we're going to do is get rid of the skin, cut down, grab the head and the trunk, and tear away. And if done right, without tearing the liver, <coughs> there you go. And the only other cut you'll have to make this will be the last part of the anal tract. And then that's the head and the stomach. Leaving you with a nice clean trunk. So we'll give it a quick wash. Beautiful. Trunked gummy shark. Alright, now we put him in the esky, get him on ice. So the trick to finding gummy sharks regularly um, in shore waters, I find are the best. As you can see, we're not that far from land. Probably 800, maybe a kilometre from shore. We're in about 10 metres of water. I found a nice drop off, about eight metres around it, and a little hole that's about 10 metres. In this hole is a bit of bait fish and whiting, one of their favourite foods. And there's quite a few patches of seaweed as well. So gummy sharks not only just feed on whiting and squid, they'll feed on crustaceans and, and that sort of stuff as well. So they'll dig through the weed and have a look. Anchor and plenty of burley, that's the key. Plenty of this good stuff. This thing is just amazing for it. Good fresh baits. So we caught some whiting, which is great. They've caught the first gummy shark and uh, we'll keep persisting. Another hour or so, it's time now, 7.30. So 
by about 8.30. That tide will be coming up. If we haven't got a second one or a third one by then, we'll shoot in, go to the weed beds and chase some squid for lunch. Probably a stingray. The last you one. and bloody stingrays. Ah, oh, there he is. Little eagle ray. Hey, he's on the surface. Let him go. Now he's just hooked in the lip. So, fingers crossed. Can you just open that bail on that reel? In case I let him go. Can you pass me the pliers, please, that are in that holder? Thank you. So if we get that one out of the way, grab that one. See ya, buddy. Off he goes. Perfect. All right, we're back at the boat ramp. We managed another four squid, two each. So a bit of dinner tonight. The one gummy shark, and uh, the wind's just starting to pick up now. So we're gonna line up at the boat ramp. There's a few people launching and going home, and uh, go enjoy dinner tonight. So go home, clean the boat, all the fun stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and uh, hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.